Let's do chapter 15, problems 1 and 2. So we're on page 409, problem 1. So a reading of the problem, calculate the density of a white dwarf star of one solar mass that has a radius of 10 to the 4 kilometers. Density is equal to mass over volume, and if it's one solar mass, then the mass of the sun is 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, so it's 10, 2 times 10 to the 30th kg over the volume. Now the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, 4 over 3 times 3.14, and the radius is given as uh, 10 to the 4th kilometers, so 10 to the 4th kilometers is equal to 10 to the 7th meters, so it's times 10 to the 7th cubed. And um, first thing we do is cancel to 3, 3.14, and we get 4, and 10 to the 7th cubed is equal to 10 to the 21st, times 10 to the 21st, so this is meters cubed, this is the volume. So the density is equal to the mass, which was 2 times 10 to the 30th, over the volume, which is 4 times 10 to the 21st. And that density is going to be 0.5 times 10 to the 9th. And this density is in uh, kilograms per meter cubed, which not, might not be so interesting to you, a cubic meter would weigh 0.5 times 10 to the ninth, so let's change it to centimeters. Uh, one cubic meter is equal to 10 squared times 10 squared times 10 squared centimeters is equal to 10 to the six centimeters cubed. So if you divide this by 10 to the six, it's equal to 0.5 times 10 to the cubed kilograms per centimeter cubed. And now um, we know that uh, 10 squared um, kilograms is equal to one ton. So this is equal to 0.5 times 10 tons per cubic centimeter. So it's equal to five tons per cubic centimeter. A cubic centimeter is about the size of a cube of sugar, which would then weigh five tons. So let's go next to problem number two on this page. And page 388, and we're dealing with uh, 409. I don't know why I said that before. Page 409. Page 409, uh, number uh, two. And if we go back to screen, it's also 409. We did that one right. So let's read the problem. Calculate the escape velocity from a white dwarf and a neutron star. Assume that each is one solar mass. Let the white dwarf radius be 10 to the fourth kilometers and the neutron star radius be 10 kilometers. Now, escape velocity is as follows. If you have a sphere that has a certain mass in it, the mass is going to exert the force of gravity. So if you throw an object upwards, then you're going to have to throw it with a certain speed, and eventually it will slow down and come back. So if you throw it faster, it will go further and slow down. So if you throw it at a certain speed, then it will go all the way to infinity. So if you're given a mass m, then you ask the question, with what velocity v do you have to throw an object up so that it will go all the way to infinity and not return and come back. And that's known as the escape velocity. And the escape velocity is given as the square root of 2, the gravitational constant, the mass divided by the radius of the object. Now the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, which you can find from the table at the back of the book. And in question A, we're dealing with a new uh, white dwarf and the radius is given as 10 to the fourth um, kilometers. So this is equal to 10 to the seventh meters. So we put these numbers into the equation for V, 
uh, V is equal to square root of 2 GM over R. So it's equal to the square root of 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And the mass was given as um, one solar mass. And we know that one solar mass is 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. I've mean, used that many times. And the radius is given as 10 to the 7th meter. So now it's just a matter of a little arithmetic. Uh, 2 times 6.67 is about 14. And 10 to the minus, and there's another 2 over there that seems to have escaped me. So that becomes 14 times 2. So it's equal to 28. And 10 to the minus 11th and 10 to the 30th is going to be 10 to the 19th. And we have a 10 to the 7th on the bottom. And the whole thing is taken to the square root. So it's equal to the square root of 28 times 10 to the 12th. Now, that's equal to the square root of 28, which is about 5, and the square root of 10 to the 12th, which is 10 to the 6th. So this is equal to about 5 times 10 to the 6th meters a second is the escape velocity from a white dwarf, which means it's about 5 million meters a second. You have to throw this object up to escape from a white dwarf. So let's go to part B. And in part B, we're going from a neutron star, which is much smaller. It's only uh, 10 kilometers apart with the same amount of mass. So it's going to have a much more intense gravity because the gravity that you feel from an object depends on the mass that is attracting you and how close you are to it, to most of that mass. Now, if you stand on the surface, then you are about, on the average, one radius away from it because half of it is close to you, half of it's not close to you. But if the same mass goes to a much smaller size, then all of that mass is much closer to you. And because that mass is closer to you, it exerts more gravity. So when the same amount of mass gets smaller, it exerts a much more gra stronger gravitational force on its surface because if you are standing on the surface, then you're much closer to all of the mass than if the radius was bigger. So the gravitational force is higher. So in part B, the same equation. V is the square root of 2 gm over r. It's the square root of 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th times 2 times 10 to the 30th, the mass of the sun. And in this case, r is equal to um, 10 kilometers. So 10 kilometers is just 10 to the third meters. So this is equal to the same 28 as we had before. And on the top, the same 10 to the 19th. And on the bottom, we have 10 to the third. So it's equal to the square root of 28 times the square root of 10 to the 16th. So it is equal to 5 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. In other words, it is 500 million meters per second. So it is 100 times stronger than it was for the white dwarf.